Welcome back. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sport, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the President of Sports Accord and the Global Association of International Sports Federations, Ivo Fariani, accompanied by the Vice President of Sport Accord, Stephen Fox. His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad welcomed Mr. Ferriani and commended the efforts of GAISF in promoting sports across the world, affirming Bahrain's interest in enhancing its cooperation with GAISF. The two sides discussed areas of joint cooperation, praising the role played by the Federation in developing various sports. Mr. Ferriani expressed thanks and appreciation to the Kingdom of Bahrain for the warm welcome and hospitality accorded to him and his delegation commending Bahrain's efforts to support the activities and programmes of international organisations. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, uh, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended the distribution ceremony of the 2023 Paralympic Sports Awards, held on the sidelines of the 2023 International Paralympic Committee IPC General Assembly and Conference, hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad stressed, the Paralympic Games enjoy the great interest of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, as well as His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs. His Highness affirmed that the Kingdom's hosting of IPC General Assembly and the distribution ceremony of the 2023 Paralympic Sport Awards confirms its support for Paralympic sports, citing the multiple achievements of Bahrain's Paralympic athletes. He added that hosting the two major Paralympic events confirmed Bahrain's constant keenness to support all Paralympic sports and give people of determination more support, in line with His Majesty the King's directives. His Highness Sheikh Khalid expressed thanks to IPC for its confidence in Bahrain's ability to host its General Assembly and distribution ceremony of the 2023 Parasports Award, which consolidates the Kingdom's status as a level of international Paralympic movement, wishing everybody success. The Sinashik Khalid then honoured top achieving Paralympic athletes. For his part, Sheikh Mohammed bin Doeja Al Khalifa expressed sincere thanks and gratitude to His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad for attending and supporting the major Paralympic event commending the efforts exerted by Bahrain Paralympic Committee President to ensure the success of the two IPC events. IPC President praised the ongoing cooperation between IPC and the Bahrain Paralympic Committee, led by Sheikh Mohammed bin Doaj, to hold an IPC General Assembly and Conference in the Kingdom, hailing Bahrain's wide-ranging sports achievements. He indicated that IPC's conference has achieved outstanding success thanks to the dedication of Bahrain Paralympic Committee and its partners. Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defence Force, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, was at the forefront of receiving the body of the Martyr of National Duty, First Lieutenant Hamad Khalifa Al Khabezi, this morning at Isa Air Base, in the presence of Minister of Defence Affairs, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Nuwaymi, and Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Thia bin Saga Al Nuwaymi. The Martyr's body arrived on board a Royal Bahraini Air Force military plane and special military ceremonies were held to receive him in the presence of a number of senior officers of the Bahrain Defence Force and a number of the martyr's family and relatives. The Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defence Force said that these brave, heroic martyrs, through their noble sacrifices in the fields of pride and dignity, have attended the highest ranks of honour and the names will remain immortal and shining in the glorious history of Bahrain. And we appreciate the men of Bahrain Defence Force, 
for coming together with the brothers stationed to defend the southern border of the sister kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Within the coalition forces, a coalition to support legitimacy in Yemen, participating in operations restoring hope. The Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defence Force prayed to Allah Almighty to rest the soul in peace and mercy and to inspire the families with presence and solace and grant a speedy recovery to the wounded and injured. The Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defence Force, National Security Advisor, Commander of the Royal Guard, Lieutenant General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa and Commander of the Royal Guard Special Force, His Highness Colonel Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, led the crowd of mourners who attended the funeral of the martyr of national duty at the Hunaniya Cemetery this afternoon in the presence of the Minister of Defence Affairs, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Nuwaymi and Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Thiad bin Saga Al Nuwaymi. The PDF Commander-in-Chief conveyed the condolences and sympathy of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to the family and relatives of the mortar of national duty. The Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defence Force also offered his sincere condolences and sympathy to the family of the martyr and his relatives and pray to Allah Almighty to grant the martyrs abundant mercy and forgiveness and accept them with martyrs and grant a speedy recovery to the wounded and injured. The General Command of the Bahrain Defence Force, the BDF, issued a statement deeply mourning the tragic loss of the fallen servicemen, First Lieutenant Hamad Khalifa al Kabezi, who valiantly gave his life in the line of duty. First Lieutenant Hamad al Kabezi passed away affected by his serious injuries as a result of Monday's act of aggression by the Houthi forces. al Kabezi was a member of the BDF task force participating in the Arab coalition to support legitimacy in Yemen as part of the operation A Decisive Storm and Restoring Hope. The BDF General Command extends its deepest condolences to the family of the fallen servicemen and pray to Allah Almighty to rest his soul in eternal peace and for the injured a speedy recovery. The members of the Security Council strongly condemned the egregious and escalatory drone attack attributed to the Houthis on members of the Bahrain Defence Force of the Kingdom of Bahrain, serving as part of the Arab coalition to support legitimacy in Yemen at the southern border of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which led to several deaths and injuries. A statement issued by the members of the Security Council said, the attack constituted a serious threat to the peace process and regional stability, including in Yemen. The members of the Security Council also called on Houthis to end all terrorist attacks, reiterating concern at the targeting of civilian infrastructure in cities at the southern border of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The statement said, The members of the Security Council stressed that any escalation would only exacerbate the suffering of the Yemeni people. They reiterated the need for decisive steps towards a sustainable ceasefire and underlined their continued strong support for efforts towards a political settlement and ultimately ending the suffering of the Yemeni people. Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa patronised the second edition of the Al Balad Shield Award for Corporate Social Responsibility, which was organised by Al Balad newspaper. In the presence of the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed bin Salman al Musalam, Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali bin Saleh al Saleh, Minister of Social Development, Usama bin Ahmed Khalaf al Asfour, and Minister of Electricity Affairs and Water, Yasser bin Ibrahim Humidan, and a number of their Excellencies, members of the Legislative Authority, officials, ambassadors, representatives of the business sector, and civil society organisations. The Deputy Prime Minister stressed the importance of social responsibility to establish a successful partnership between the public and private sectors, in line with the Royal Directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He stressed the efforts of the media industry in highlighting the private sector's efforts to achieving sustainable development that requires the integration of corporate social responsibility. The Deputy Prime Minister indicated the government's keenness to continue building on and strengthening 
the foundations of partnership with the private sector to ensure the creation of promising opportunities for citizens by moving forward in achieving the priorities and goals contained in the government's programme and in a way that aims to continue achieving the well-being of social stability and economic prosperity for the Kingdom of Bahrain. He underlined the role of the media in highlighting success stories that highlight contributions of the private sector to the development of the local community, aiming to motivate all companies operating in the sector of all sizes to launch more social responsibility initiatives and adopt this culture within the administrative system and strategic goals. The Deputy Prime Minister also expressed his appreciation to the management of Albalat newspaper and members of the Independent Supreme Committee for launching the Albalat Shield Initiative for corporate social responsibility, praising at the same time the updates witnessed in the second cycle of the award. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa handed over the prizes to the winning companies, where Bapco Refining Company won the Grand Prize Shield, Aluminium Bahrain Alba won the Environmental Excellence Shield, STC Bahrain won the Economic Excellence Shield, and National Bank of Bahrain won Social Excellence Shield. Chairman of Al Balad Media Foundation, Abdel Nabi Al Shola, expressed his gratitude to Deputy Prime Minister for his patronage of the event in its second season, which reflects the government's great interest in initiatives supporting the achievement of sustainable development goals. Minister of Municipal Affairs and Agriculture, Wal bin Nasser al Mubarak, headed the delegation of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the meeting of ministers concerned with municipalities and agriculture in the Gulf Cooperation Council countries, which was held in Muscat, Oman. The minister affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain, within its plans and strategies related to agricultural development and achieving food security, is continuing to enhance cooperation and consolidate partnership with the countries of the Gulf Cooperation Council in a way that achieves the desired development goals. The Minister of Municipal Affairs and Agriculture explained that the meeting discussed a number of important topics which constitute major foundations towards achieving Gulf integration related to food security, livestock and marine wealth. The Minister stressed that the GCC countries possess a lot of knowledge and experience in implementing qualitative initiatives in the sectors of agriculture, marine, resources and livestock, stressing that the Kingdom of Bahrain supports all the outcomes of the Gulf Ministerial Meeting. Out of its belief in the importance of joint Gulf action and its great role in supporting agricultural action. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Acting Minister of Tourism, 
Abdullah bin Adil Fakhro held a meeting with the Saudi Minister of Tourism, Ahmed bin Aghil Al Khatib. The meeting came in the sidelines of the 43rd session of the World Tourism Day, which was held in Riyadh from September the 27th to the 28th, under the theme of tourism and green investments. Minister Fakhro expressed pride in the long standing fraternal Bahraini Saudi relations praising the steady growth of bilateral cooperation in various fields, particularly tourism. He also commended the constant efforts exerted by the two kingdoms to boost the tourism and travel industry, as well as increased tourism investments. The two ministers discussed ways to follow up on the outcomes of the Memorandum of Understanding, the MOU, signed between the two countries, under which the two kingdoms will be promoted regionally and internationally as a single tourist destination. They stress that the outcomes of the MOU reflect the fruitful efforts made by the relevant authorities in both kingdoms. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Acting Minister of Tourism, Adullah bin Adil Fakhru, also met with the Secretary General of the World Tourism Organization, Zorab Palikashvili. The Minister stressed that the Kingdom of Bahrain is paying great attention to developing an integrated system for the tourism sector in accordance with international best practices and this is a major driver for supporting the growth and competitiveness of the national economy. During the meeting, the two parties urged the role of the travel and tourism sector in the recovery of the global economy and the necessary of building a foundation, more comprehensive and sustainable growth of the tourism sector and increasing the role of this sector's positive returns on communities, individuals and small and medium-sized companies in particular, in addition to highlighting the elements of tourist attraction and introducing Bahrain to the tourism, heritage, cultural and family factors that make it a leading destination for tourists. The Minister also discussed with the UNWTO Secretary General ways of cooperation in the field of providing practical training for some specialisations in the tourism sector in the regional office of the World Tourism Organisation and its main office in addition to doubling joint efforts to develop tourism capabilities in the Kingdom and launching innovative tourism programmes and services on an ongoing basis. Fakhru stressed the Ministry's keenness to build bridges of fruitful partnership with various international organisations concerned with tourism, most notably the World Tourism Organisation, and its commitment to continue supporting the organisation's efforts in activating plans and strategies for the recovery of the tourism sector in countries of the region. President of the Republic of Georgia, Salam Zorabishvili, received the chairman of the National Council for Arts, Sheikh Rashid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, following the opening of his exhibition, First Light, at the Zurab Tlisili Museum of Modern Art, MOMA, in Tbilisi. President Zorabishvili welcomed Sheikh Rashid bin Khalifa, stressing the importance of such meetings in strengthening the friendship and cooperation, noting Bahrain's comprehensive artistic and cultural progress. She also praised Sheikh Rashid's artistic efforts and role in highlighting the civilised face of the kingdom by shedding light on fine art as one of the creative, intellectual and cultural fields, wishing him continued success. The National Council for Arts Chairman expressed thanks and appreciation to the Georgian President for the warm welcome and hospitality accorded to him, affirming that based on the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the constant support of the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, his Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Kingdom of Bahrain will carry on its civilised approach, based on openness, tolerance and coexistence, in a way that consolidates rapprochement among peoples and cultures, as well as promotes peace and harmony worldwide. He also praised George's distinguished cultural and artistic movement, making it as a cultural hub for lovers of culture and all forms of art. He said that he was looking forward to the Kingdom's hosting of Georgian artists, stressing art's ability to extend bridges of friendship and create memorable experiences. The First Light exhibition runs until November the 11th in the presence of a group of artists from Bahrain and Georgia who expressed admiration for the Bahraini artist's creative works and success in enriching the Kingdom's artistic movement throughout his rich career. Bahrain's ambassador to the United States, Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa, held a meeting with the Oklahoma State Governor, Kevin Studd. 
Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid highlighted the commercial relations between the two countries, including the trade opportunities available within the framework of investment and commercial cooperation with the state of Oklahoma. He pointed out that there are more opportunities in areas that could constitute a qualitative addition to economic cooperation, especially since bilateral relations are progressing significantly, which would contribute to achieving common interests. The ambassador touched on a number of issues related to regional security and stability, in addition to the possibility of concluding twinning agreements between cities in the state of Oklahoma and their Bahraini counterparts. Governor Kevin Stitt affirmed his keenness to enhance relations with Bahrain, wishing the kingdom and its people further progress and prosperity. The Special Investigation Unit, the SIU, will organise a workshop on international human rights procedures and mechanisms under the patronage of the Attorney General, Dr Ali bin Fadl al Buenian, on October the 2nd to the 3rd. The workshop will be held in cooperation with the Human Rights Affairs Sector and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the United Nations Development Programme and the UN Human Rights Regional Office for the Middle East and North Africa. Acting Advocate General and SIU Chief Mohammed Khaled Alhaza said that the workshop aims to highlight the special procedures followed by international mechanisms in following up on human rights, the national obligations towards them and the conditions for accepting reports and the procedures for classifying them. It will also study the requirements for preparing reports and responding to international inquiries, as well as shed light on the best practices in this regard. Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan, held talks with Albanian Prime Minister Edi Rama in the capital Tirama on Friday. They discussed ways to strengthen ties between the nations in a number of important sectors and spoke about expanding the framework for economic cooperation in priority sectors such as energy, infrastructure and tourism. Strengthening cooperation through a comprehensive economic partnership was also discussed. Sheikh Khalid praised the positive growth of relations between the two countries since the signing of the Economic Cooperation Agreement between the UAE and Albania in 2020. His Holiness Pope Francis of the Vatican on Friday commended a UN agency's efforts to end what he called the scourge of food loss and waste across the planet. Pope Francis, in his letter to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, told the FAO director, Kudong Nyu, that the prevailing culture has led to the denaturalization of the value of food, reducing it to a mere commodity to be exchanged. The letter was sent on the International Day of Awareness of Food Loss and Waste, established by the FAO in 2020. The day is meant to help prioritise actions and move ahead with innovation to reduce food loss and waste. In his letter, Pope Francis said that they must be clear about the urgency of a radical paradigm shift because people can no longer limit themselves to interpreting reality in terms of economics or insatiable profit. Food waste, Francis said, shows an arrogant disregard for everything that is social and human terms that lies behind food production. People lined up to vote in early parliamentary elections in Slovakia that began today. Approximately 4.4 million voters over the age of 18 are eligible to vote to determine the new members of the 150-seat parliament. A total of 25 large and small parties and alliances are participating in the election, of which parties above the 7% threshold will enter the National Council of the Slovak Republic. Parliamentary elections are being held for the ninth time in the country, which declared independence from the Czech Republic in 1993. Some 185,000 voters between the ages of 18 and 21 are casting the ballots for the first time. Heavy rains overnight in the northeastern United States left parts of New York City underwater, partially paralyzing subways and airports at the country's financial capital. New York Governor Kathy Hochul declared an official state of emergency for the city, Long Island to the east and the Hudson River Valley to the north, warning people not to travel on flooded roads. Images from around New York showed cars half submerged and traffic snarled with some major roads completely blocked. 
The massive New York subway system was also hit by flooding, with several lines closed in Brooklyn. The rain came from a low-pressure system along the mid-Atlantic coast, which pulls in moist air from the ocean.